Uh, a few tips on painting. Uh, you can use these plastic sheathing uh, for drop clothes. And this is my uh, spactin trays and spactin tools. And to get uh, level 5 sheetrock on seams, you have to start small and work out wider from the joint between two pieces of sheetrock and get to that level and you don't put on very much each time because you don't want to have to sand so much so you put it on and you might take two or three thin coats for each one of these if you're really good at it you can probably do it with one uh, or two of the smaller coats and on the bigger coat uh, you might have to do two and when you paint uh, any surface, if you use sheetrock or this wood, I've sanded down all these edges and you need tack cloths. They're especially oil impregnated cloth and they will lift the dust. And we save them and put them in these little baggies because it's oil. And you can take this and rub all over that surface of a, a drywall that you've prepared and getting ready to prime, like I'm getting ready to prime this wood. It would apply to sheetrock as well. And you can wipe them down with these and I always have a bunch of them because it is very important to get the dust off. And then as far as painting goes, most everybody's used to these trays and this is a whole contract to pack of trays. You can rinse the trays out and reuse them if you want to or you can just chuck them afterwards. There's a lot of little places that you need to touch up and paint and I always use these little brushes and we use them over and over and over. Uh, my brushes are in another box. I've got two brushes that I've been using for 30 years. If you clean them properly after you paint, especially with oil paint or your mortar base, uh, they will, they'll last you a long time and you won't have to brine them all the time. Now face masks for dusting when you're doing jade rock, uh, running a sander on this, uh, it's not that critical. When you paint normal walls, you can use a 3 8 nap. Uh, roller. You can have three inch rollers, four inch rollers, or big rollers. I find that I can paint. If you and I were both painting a house and I could take a brush and paint like lap joints on, on a siding and then I can roll the house and I can do twice as much of work as you can with a brush. A four inch roller for painting wood painting walls, painting uh, the siding on that house. See how gray it is over there in the siding? All you have to do is the seams with the brush and you can roll all the rest of it. And I can beat you. I will finish five feet and you won't have done one with a four inch roller. And then the rollers, the nap rollers are great if you're just painting walls with regular paint. You know, sheetrock walls. When you get into doors, and cabinets and finish work this will leave pieces of this nap in your finished paint now you won't see it on the walls but if you have a door and it's smooth wood or metal and you paint it with that it will leave hair in it all these little things will come off and it's a mess and you use these foam rollers for doors and cabinets and it will not leave any mark and if you have a large job you use the bigger ones but they're for doors and cabinets and they they won't leave them off it will look like you spray painted it another thing is these were the greatest ones now they're making them all out of plastic and we clean them up and we'll solve them if we're using oil based paint or water and you can just replace your can cap with this lid and take the cap unscrew this red and pour what you want and put it back up and there's no drips or runs down the paint can. Now they have these plastic ones and they work just as well. And this is an old one. We've painted with it many times. And there's all kinds of rollers. And if you're doing big walls, you want to use these like eight, nine inch rollers. And if you buy them in contractor packs, it's a lot cheaper, especially if you're knowing a lot of them. And this is just rollers sponges and see how we've used these trays over and over and over again see it's that's sealed up paint it's dried off you could put another paint in there 
as long as it's all all the latex latex but just a few tips on painting when you use these uh, caps and you pour your paint into your pan you always want to wipe the top of those threads off so it won't seize up on you because this is just plastic and it'll twist and break and if you want to save your rollers, especially with working with, well you can use it with uh, oil based paint which you're, it's getting exceedingly rare to even be able to buy and uh, latex paint and what you would do is take this roller, this is what I used yesterday, you see where I put the roller down and roll this roller up and I'm going to try to do this without getting paint on me or my camera <coughs> and one handed so you would roll the wet paint on a paper towel it's a full paper towel these are these little half jobs folded over and then you put it on another one if I can pay attention to my viewfinder and you put that on that and then I used this one yesterday it's a little paint on it but it's basically dry and you just do this three or four times And after you get it done the fourth time, you just soak the outer one with water. And then you put it in a plastic bag or a Ziploc bag and you twist it around the handle. And I just stick it in something like that. And then you come back the next day and you take this out. You unroll the paper, put some paint in your tray and start painting. And you can do it day after day after day. And if you use an oil base, you have to do it with thinner. And it's best to put it somewhere you don't want to breathe the fumes off of the thinner. But that roller would have oil base paint on it, and you'd roll it up, and you'd put thinner on this. And roll it up tight like that. If I had two hands, I'd do it. And then I'd wrap that around the thing really tight. And then the next day, you unroll it, and you can keep painting. And if you take these uh, paper towels, the old ones first and get all this paint out all the way down to where you wet uh, one of these with latex that's real nice because it'll wash off your fingers and uh, you can wipe out all this paint <coughs> just like that it uses a few paper towels but it's cheaper than the, the liners and always use liners and see how you pan never get you really paint on it and then you do that with uh, you get most of the loose paint up with dry paper towels and then you take a wet one and you roll it all wipe it all around and it's all clean ready to go the next day so you haven't used anything and when you do the same thing with a brush you clean your brush you should always clean your brushes thoroughly with soap and water if the brush is a if you can do it with that brush <clears throat> and you should have a latex type brush and then you wrap it up like that put a rubber band around it and I just stuff it in the can and it's ready to clean, ready to go the next day. <clears throat> Just a tip on being able to keep that clean, use the liners, wipe out the liners, pour the paint in it, and do it again. This is easy to do with latex paint. See, I've wiped that out with paper towels. It took uh, four of them, and then I used a wet paper towel and wiped all the stuff out and dried it with another paper towel. And this is tightly wound up, and it's all wet. And I can paint with it this afternoon, tonight, or tomorrow. And oil base, and if you keep it wet and sealed up, you could use this three or four days later. And I'm going to end up painting this whole job with one roller. And all the old stuff is in here to be disposed. <clears throat>